Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan here with another rapid physiology review. Today I'm gonna to give you a quick review of the physiology of cirrhosis. This is everything you need to know in terms of physiology of cirrhosis for your step one exam. So the primary physiologic derangement in patients with cirrhosis is low SVR. SVR is the systemic vascular resistance, and if you don't know, it's also sometimes called the total peripheral resistance or TPR. The two terms mean the same thing. But whatever you call it, the SVR or the TPR, it's low in patients with advanced cirrhosis. The reasons why this happens are incompletely understood, but it's believed to be related to vasodilation of splanchnic blood vessels. Those are blood vessels found in the abdominal cavity, and it's believed to be mediated by nitric oxide. How this happens, we don't totally understand. But whatever the mechanism, the SVR is low in patients with advanced cirrhosis, and that's going to lead to low blood pressure. Remember that your blood pressure is determined by the combination of your cardiac output and your SVR, and so when the SVR goes down, the blood pressure goes down. Low blood pressure is gonna be sensed by baroreceptors in the body, and that's gonna increase the activity of the sympathetic nervous system in response to low blood pressure. The sympathetic nervous system then is going to stimulate the heart, and that's going to increase the heart rate. It's also going to increase the contractility of the left ventricle. And these effects are going to lead to high cardiac output. So in all patients with cirrhosis, a high cardiac output is an expected finding. This is because of the sympathetic nervous system activity. It's also because when the SVR and the blood pressure are low, that represents low afterload on the left ventricle. So that also helps to raise the cardiac output. Now, in addition to activating the sympathetic nervous system, the low blood pressure is also going to increase activity of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. The kidneys are gonna sense the low blood pressure and release more renin. And so all the elements of the RAS are gonna see increased activity in patients with cirrhosis. So more activity of angiotensin II, more activity of aldosterone, more activity of ADH. All of this is because of the RAS being activated. And that's going to lead to the kidneys retaining sodium and water. Anytime the RAS is activated, the kidneys retain more sodium and water. The sympathetic nervous system can also cause retention of sodium and water. And so in patients with cirrhosis, they are total body sodium and total body water overloaded. That's because their kidneys are retaining sodium and water. And this is one of the things that contributes to the ascites that they get in their abdomen. Now, besides all of these changes, another thing happening in cirrhosis is that there's decreased synthesis of albumin by the liver. And albumin is very important for determining the oncotic pressure in capillaries. So if you think about a capillary like a straight tube in the abdominal cavity, what is gonna drive fluid out of this capillary and into the abdomen causing ascites? Well, one thing that will do this is low oncotic pressure. And I talk about this in the Boards and Beyond videos. When the oncotic pressure gets low in a capillary from low albumin, remember albumin is the major determinant of oncotic pressure. And so when albumin is low, oncotic pressure gets low, and that drives fluid out in this direction. And so the retention of sodium and water by the kidneys plus the low oncotic pressure caused by low albumin, this all contributes to causing ascites in the abdomen. One other thing contributes to ascites in the abdomen, and that is portal hypertension. So when the liver is cirrhotic, blood cannot flow through it, and blood backs up behind the liver, and that raises the pressure in vascular structures in the abdomen. That's gonna increase the hydrostatic pressure in capillaries. There are two important properties of capillaries, the oncotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic pressure is like your blood pressure. It's the pressure of molecules pressing against the walls. So that can go up from portal hypertension and that also drives fluid out in this direction. So this combination, high hydrostatic pressure from portal hypertension, low oncotic pressure from low albumin, these two things coupled with retaining sodium and water by the kidneys, it all conspires to drive lots of fluid out of vessels and into the abdomen causing ascites. So on this slide, I've summarized basically everything you need to know about the physiology of cirrhosis. If you understand this, you can answer lots and lots of questions about what's happening inside the body of patients who have cirrhosis. And that concludes our rapid physiology review.